Greetings and salutations. Sam here with Common Time Productions. And today I wanted to go over some wonderful tips and tricks with Melodyne inside Mixcraft 10. And so I've got a fun little track that I put together. Just grab some drum parts from the library in Mixcraft. So it's a 1988 chart toppers glam rock. And I just used a couple of the different drum parts to give myself a little bit of a timekeeper so that I could have a fun time playing a riff. Then I quickly recorded a verse chorus bass riff. Very simple. Let's check that out real quick. So let's pull this up real quick. Actually, I'm going to remove it and then have it rescan again. And I'm going to check my algorithm, make sure it's on melodic. All right, so it is on melodic. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to undock. Okay, ah, there we go. So I can see over here that I got to pull down the scroll bar so that I'm in the right area so that I can see all of the blobs. Okay, so we can take a look at the whole piece. Like so. And you can see the little gray part down here, the gray scroller. And when it's got the magnifier on it, you can drag the magnifier back and forth. And it zooms in and out on the track. There is also the magnifier up here. And so dragging at a diagonal, we can zoom in and out of the track in different ways. So left, right zooms in and out on the whole track. Up, down zooms in and out on the blobs. So this diagonal gives us, you know, kind of a way to quickly maneuver around a track and take a quick peek around to see what's going on. I like, I personally do like using the tab bar at the bottom. It's just what I've gotten used to. There's several ways to navigate. So whatever you're comfortable with, I do want to be able to see a little clearer. I want to look at this, you know, several measures so I can see the notes. All right, then come back up here to my pointer. Oh, and there I can see my first strike. And that is pretty close to on the dot for tuning. And that is what I want to see is to see those notes right in the middle there so that I can see that it's in C. Another thing is you can hold control and that also allows you to zoom in. Also, when you're over the note like this, and we can see it and hear it. Now, if I hold the Alt key, I can slowly move that back up into tune. Now, my finger slur that was a little weak is now tuned. And so now it's closer to some of these other ones. And you can see where I slipped on this third one over here as well. And just, you know, little little movements, they don't have to be perfect, but getting us closer into the ballpark, you know, leaving a lot of the little human nuances that, you know, make it feel like it was played by a real human as it was. Uh, but there's, you know, a lot of those little things that we can completely keep intact, but also go back and get the tuning and timing really razor sharp. I also like that I can come to the beginning here and double click Okay, and so, so far, things have been really close. I'm actually really happy with that. I will leave the slides in the middle here because that it's a, that's very natural. It's going, those slides are in-betweens, and so they will fall on these, you know, quarter semi-tone notes that, you know, don't really work anywhere else except in a transition movement, like sliding a note on the bass. But I like where these fall. They sound very natural as they're supposed to. And I like that visually you can also see that, you know, I got it 
really close to right in the middle, which is what I'm going for with my ears when I'm listening to this. Sometimes things are not always in perfect absolute tune, they're just relative. And that's something to keep in mind with string, stringed instruments and working with multiple instruments is that they're close. I can see here where I've got a few points that are out. So I'm gonna come over here and grab them. Just gonna nudge them ever so slightly. You can double click in an area, and it'll bring the cursor there to play, and then double click again, and it stops. And this is really handy for doing these quick edits. I've also got my hand on the keyboard close to the Alt tab so that I am ready with my Alt tab to quickly go through to alter, to make these alterations so that I can move through these edits fairly fast. With quick little timing edits, or tuning edits. All right, now that we've got our bass track tuned, then we can go in and finalize. After we've gone in with Melodyne and cleaned it up super fast, one of the other things I will do is I will use it to convert it to an audio clip or MIDI clip, sorry about that. I will take the audio and turn it into a MIDI. And one of my favorite things to do is I like to come in and grab the Glass Viper, go to the bass presets, grab Deep Groove. It's always one of my stand-ins. I love how this works. Oh, and it read that really low. Okay, so let's come in here. And so transpose it up, 12. Okay, not exactly perfect because it did capture all of those transition notes. But then, you know, the nice thing is, is that we can come in to the step editor. And we are able to go in and clean these types of things. So with this type of situation, I would probably go in and remove those particular points and then then I would probably go in and get these little moments where it's not as clean. And if you just look to the grid, you can kind of see where the notes fall. This is a quick and easy way. Some of those might sound good. Some of them might need to be maneuvered or deleted. But what's fun is Melodyne gets us to this point super fast a MIDI track made from an audio track. Now, one of the other things we could do is take the drum part. Okay, so we've got some definitive hits here. And so since we've got this nice little block of four, copy it, and bring it down to a new track. Okay, and this one, I'm going to convert audio clip to MIDI. So now I've got it redetected on percussive. Quick way to be able to create a secondary drum sound. Like a quick kick sample off of what we already had. Both things together. Just a fun way to enhance. 
One of the other things I wanted to go over that I thought was a great thing that I didn't discover till about halfway through my journey going through Melodyne was when I am manipulating a note is that I can use the arrow tabs on my keyboard which I thought was absolutely wonderful. Just then even right there, it, was, I mean, it allowed me to see something and hear it and catch it. So if we use our ears and eyes, we're able to dial this stuff all the way into razor blades and make it wonderful, sound like it's commercial and in the pop pocket, but still maintain that feeling of being played by a human. We've shown how to grab Melodyne essentials inside Mixcraft and tune it. We've also shown how we can manipulate things in time. We can make a MIDI bass track. We also can go in and make a MIDI kick or snare. We can use the Alt tab to maneuver around inside we're able to zoom in and out and you know with the alt key maneuver around and then when we're holding on to the tracks using the alt key it allows us to make small micro movements it also allows us holding the alt key and when we're on the beginning and the end of the note we also have the ability to move that timing around a little bit so if we're slightly off or we need to drag that in so that we're on the downbeat or the upbeat or wherever it needs to be we can quickly make these little adjustments and it does not sound like we have edited in any way, shape or form. Hopefully these different ways to use Melodyne, I hope I covered a bunch of stuff here that'll help everybody out. I'm really enjoying doing the tutorials. I really enjoy Mixcraft. I enjoy sharing it and I'd love to talk more about it with all of you. And I'd like to hear what you have to think of, you know, what are some things that you would like to see or know how Mixcraft can function? You know, what are some of the other things that it can do? We'll start bringing in third party VSTs and other things and song structures and all that type of fun stuff. I think that uh, rounds up this and uh, I think we've covered everything that we need to in this particular one. I look forward to doing many more of these for you guys and the deeper dive into Mixcraft and making music in Mixcraft. Talk to you soon.